Hello everybody. My name is Stacia Diles and I'm a teacher at Murphy High School. Today we are going to do a lesson on 10th grade English and we're going to talk about argumentative writing. Let's go ahead and look at our standard for today. Our standard today is W10.1. It is to write arguments to support claims in an analysis of a substantive topics or text using valid reasoning and relevant and suffice evidence. Okay, so let's talk about what is an argumentative essay. Well, an argumentative essay, basically the aim of writing is to convince or persuade the reader. Thus, an argumentative essay needs to be highly persuasive and logical, meaning it makes sense. Let's talk about our goals for today. After today's lesson, you should understand the purpose of argumentative writing you should become experienced at making a claim and writing a thesis statement. And you should learn how to provide strong evidence to support your thesis and claim. All right, there are a couple key terms that I need you to write down in your notes so that as you get to argumentative writing this week in your packet, you will know how to apply and what these terms actually mean. The first one is argument. Well, an argument is a single claim or series of claims presented and defended by the writer, which is you. The second term is a claim. A claim is a statement or an assertion that is open to challenge and requires support. Basically, that means it's your belief about a particular topic, issue, event, or idea. Our third term is a counter-argument. A counter-argument is when you are acknowledging the opposition of your argument, the other side. And then we're going to talk about some support. Support is when you have specific facts or specific evidence used to support why your claim is true. So this is what you're going to use to back the claim that you make. And then our last term, and it's a very important one, is thesis statement. A thesis statement is a statement or sentence that states the purpose of a paper or an essay. It is the roadmap to your essay. And thesis is extremely important, which is why we're going to talk about it a little bit more. Let's talk about how we can develop a thesis statement. Now, I've been teaching English for many years, and I've taught 6th and 8th and 10th grade and 9th grade, and I have students who still struggle with thesis statements. So I really want to take some time to dive into this so that you can finally get a firm understanding. Okay, so a thesis statement. Again, let's look back at the definition. It's a statement or a sentence that states the purpose of a paper or an essay. It's the roadmap. Basically, a thesis statement is a fancy way of making a statement of what you believe and why you believe it. When you write an essay, you must clearly state your thesis at the end of your introductory paragraph. It needs to be there. When your reader reads the end of your introductory paragraph, they should find your thesis. Your thesis, like it says down here, is going to map out the order in which your points are going to be made. If you do not have a thesis, you do not have a quality essay. We have to have this for our foundation. The reasons you write an entire essay is to prove the thesis statement. So if you have nothing to prove, you have no essay. Okay, let's continue a little bit further about how we can write a thesis statement. There are going to be three parts. Make sure you jot these down in your notes so that you can write these on your own when it comes to your packet. The first part of a thesis statement is going to be identification. So notice I have it in red and underlined. Identification is what is the topic that you are talking about. We have to identify the topic and make sure that our readers know what's going to be discussed. The second part is a claim. What do you believe about this topic? And then the third is the direction. What are the three main reasons you can support your claim? This is basically the outline of the body paragraphs of your essay. So the first thing we do is we find identification, we make a claim, and then we see the direction in which we're headed. You are going to need to form three parts into a complete argumentative sentence. 
Watch as I model this on the next slide. I also want you to remember a few things before we begin. Before you write your thesis, decide what you plan to argue and determine at least three different and general ways in which you can prove your opinion. And I want you to think about the story that you're using in your packet. Second, it might help to make a T-chart or other brainstorming visuals first. Sometimes it's easier to argue a certain side of an issue, and it might be smart to take the side that is easier to prove. You are going to be writing about the metamorphosis by Franz Kafka in your packet. I want you to apply these concepts to the prompt that you are working with. So I want you to make note of this last point. Sometimes it is easier to argue one side of a claim or an argument than another. I have students who want to challenge themselves and pick the difficult road, and I think that's great. Everybody needs to try to challenge themselves. But if you don't feel very confident in argumentative writing right now, it might be easier to take the stance that's going to be easier to prove. Let me show you what I'm talking about when it comes to applying those three steps of a thesis. Okay, here's our first practice. We're gonna read the writing prompt, and then we're gonna discuss how we could create a thesis out of this prompt. The prompt states, educators often discuss whether high school sports have a positive influence on students. Some educators think high school sports do have a positive influence because the lessons learned from athletic competition add to the lessons learned in the classroom. Other, education, other educators think high school sports do not have a positive influence because the emphasis on sports often overshadows, overshadows student achievement in other areas. In your opinion, do high school sports have a positive influence on students? So I want you to think about these things we discussed. What is the topic here? What could be the possible claim? What side would you take there? Are sports beneficial or are they not? And then what could be three reasons or directions that we could make on why sports either are or are not beneficial? Now as you're thinking about that, I'm gonna show you what I've modeled ahead of time. Okay, in this writing prompt, let's talk about our first step, which to identify the topic. Well, what is the topic in this prompt? It's stated in the first sentence. It's high school sports. That's what we're discussing. Now, as it continues, we need to make a claim. Here it says that sports have a positive influence. Now, you could argue that either they do have a positive influence or they do not. That is your choice to make. Here, I have argued that yes, sports have a positive influence on students because personally, I think I have more to write about on that topic. I think I can develop some stronger points to get my point across. So let's look at the three things that we're discussing here in our direction. What would make sports a beneficial and positive influence on students? Well, one, it could be that it teaches social skills. You have to work together as a team. Two, time management. It teaches time management. You have to balance extracurricular sports and your curriculars. Then it provides exercise and it teaches the benefits of hard work. When you're involved in sports, you're gonna be involved in some type of physical exercise, which we all know benefits our bodies. Okay, now notice, we're taking the topic, the claim, and the direction, and we are gonna form these together to make one solid thesis statement that's gonna be the roadmap for our essay. It says high school sports unquestionably have a positive influence. That's our claim. Notice that word unquestionably is thrown in there. That's just there to help make our argument a little stronger and feel a little more you know, determined. It says it unquestionably has a positive influence on high school students because they teach social skills, reinforce time management skills, provide exercise, and show the benefit of hard work. If you notice here, we really just plugged in our topic, our claim, and our direction. This is something you can easily do with any topic that you come across. Let's try another one. So for our second practice, I'm gonna read the prompt aloud. 
The state of Illinois has been locked into a debate for several years as to whether the driving age should be raised from 16 to 18. Some people feel that 16-year-olds lack the responsibility and maturity to handle the significant privileges of driving. Others argue that 16-year-olds use their licenses for much more than social events. In your opinion, should the driving age be raised from 16 to 18? I want you to look at that prompt for just a moment and think to yourself, can you identify this topic? What claim would you make? And then what would be some reasonings or directions that you could take with that claim? Let's again see what I modeled at home. Okay, for this second prompt, we know that our topic is going to be the driving age. What driving age? The driving age in Illinois, that's important. Okay, now a claim. What are we asking here? Should the driving age be raised from 16 to 18. Now, the reason I chose this is because most of you are 15 and 16, and this is something that's, you know, pretty important to you. So what would your choice be? Would you think that the age should be raised to 18 or it should stay to 16? I chose that the driving age should not be raised from 16 to 18. And then I had some reasonings of my own of why I thought that. So let's think about your logical reasonings. Why do you as a 16 year old feel you need the right to drive? Well, one thing I put is that students need to drive to school. What if you live too close to the school to ride the bus, yet you still have to walk about a mile? I know several students who have this, so they would rather drive. You can also participate in extracurricular activities. I know that many students don't have rides to get to sports, either before school or after school, so having this license available and being able to drive at 16 would definitely make this easier. And the third point is that it can also provide transportation to a job. I know that you know, students at this age are constantly being pressured to be mature and responsible, so driving to a job and having a job is one of those first steps. Let's see how we took these three things and organized them into a thesis statement. Here we plug in the topic, the driving age in Illinois. Then we state our claim, should not be raised from 16 to 18 because 16 year olds need to drive to school, participate in extracurricular activities, and have transportation to a job. Now we've taken this prompt and we've broken it down by the topic, the claim, and some key points in our direction. Okay, hopefully you got that. Let's do a little recap on making a claim and a thesis. So one, it is a statement. It is going to be clear and precise. It is only one sentence, one statement, and it gets right to the point. It's also going to take a position. Either you feel something should be done a certain way or it should not be done a certain way. You have to take a stance. It can also be supported with logical reasons. When you take a position, you should be able to convince or persuade people using logic and reasoning that they can understand. Okay, let's talk about our second step. Now that we know how to develop a thesis, let's talk about ideas and strong evidence to back this thesis. So after formulating your argumentative thesis, you need to brainstorm a variety of supporting ideas. Pros and the opposing ideas would be cons. You can make a T-chart at home or list them either way you want. This way you know what you have to write about. If you find yourself having a lot more pros, well then maybe you need to take that stance. If you find yourself easily developing those cons, well then maybe that's the side you should go with. All right, when we are supporting our argument, one important concern in writing an argumentative essay is to strengthen your argument. To do this, you need to base your argument on sound evidence. Can't just be opinions. It has to be strong and it has to be sound evidence. It's also in supporting your argument, the evidence that you include, there's gonna be three different types we're gonna deal with today. One is facts, the other is examples, and then lastly we have testimony, 
which is basically an expert opinion. I'm going to write these, have these up here for you to write down on your paper so that you can plug these in. So the first type of evidence we're talking about is facts. This is when we have data that has been objectively proven and are generally accepted, such as historical facts, scientific data, or statistics. If you have either of those appear in your paper, use those type of evidence, those are going to be called facts. They can be proven. The second time is examples. This should be sufficient number of examples to prove the case. So having only one example is probably not going to be strong enough. If you're going to use examples as a type of evidence to support your argument, you need to have multiple examples that can be proven. And then the last type is testimony, which we said earlier is the opinions of experts. I want you to take notes on these and then we're going to plug in a little bit of practice. All right, supporting evidence, practice one. It is clear that TV triggers violence. According to a study by the American Psychological Association, the average child living in a developed country will view 8,000 murders and 100,000 other acts of violence before finishing elementary school. The average 27 hours a week kids spend watching TV, much of it violent, makes them more prone to aggressive and violent behaviors as adolescents and adults. TV executives have known this for a long time. One of the most comprehensive studies of the impact of TV violence was commissioned by CBS back in 1978. It found that teenage boys who watched more hours of violent TV than average before adolescence were committing such violent crimes as rape and assault at a rate 49% higher than boys who watched fewer than average hours of violence TV. Okay, that is a pretty intense paragraph. Let's talk about what type of evidence we have here. What could we back this with if we're making a claim? What type of supporting technique is used? Let's look. Look right here. It says, according to a study by the American Psychological Association. Well, this is a, this is a business, this is an association. This is definitely an accredited organization. Notice here, it says page 10 has been quoted, meaning it's directly being pulled from a source in a text. And then it says that CBS also noticed this. Again, another credible organization. Therefore, the supporting technique used here is facts. We have data and we have statistics. It gave us the number of how many students were watching, how many hours, and then the rate at which they were higher to commit violent crimes. Let's look at another one. Not letting their children watch television as a punishment is a futile effort of parents since most of every effect of punishment is negative. Dr. Bruno Bethlehem, famous psychologist and professor at the University of Chicago, writes, punishment is a traumatic experience, not only in itself, but also because it disappoints the child's wish to believe in the benevolence of the parent on which his sense of security rests. Let's talk about what type of supporting technique is used here. All right, notice here we have a doctor. Dr. Bruno, he is a psychologist. He is writing to us what he thinks about punishment and how it affects a child. Now, he is obviously going to be an expert. He is here of providing for us testimony and the expert experience of a famous psychologist. Okay, let's kind of wrap up and review what we have learned today on our first lesson of persuasive writing. Number one, persuasive writing. Basically, this is the aim of writing argumentative essays to convince or persuade the reader. We're trying to get someone to believe what we believe. Then we also make sure that the argumentative essay needs to be highly persuasive and logical, meaning that the points that you make should make sense to your reader. They should be logical to them. The second thing that we want to review today is our thesis statement. Again, we said that thesis statements are extremely important. 
So a thesis statement is a sentence that states the purpose of a paper or essay. It is also known as the roadmap to your essay. Every thesis needs those three things. The first one is identification. What is the topic that you're talking about? You need to make sure you let your reader know that. Then you're going to plug in your claim. What do you believe about this topic? What stance are you going to take? Are you for it? Are you against it? Thirdly, we have the direction. What are the three main reasons that you can support your claim? This will basically outline the body paragraphs of your essay. And I hope you remember where the thesis statement belongs. It belongs at the very end of your introductory paragraph. Then we need to talk and clear up about evidence. Evidence is important and we have to make sure that we have a strong argument. You have to base your argument on sound evidence. In supporting your argument, the evidence that you include can be facts, statistics, things that come out of a studied work, could be examples, and if you use examples, you need to make sure that you have multiple types, or it could be testimony, which is an expert opinion, someone who we trust and believe about the topic. Okay, so those are our three things that we reviewed for today for persuasive writing, our thesis statement, and then providing strong evidence. Next week, as we continue our lesson with argumentative writing, we're going to discuss hooks and how to formulate really strong body paragraphs with good topic sentences. Well, that's all the time that we have for today, and we will see you next week.